Namo Bhutai, Namo Bhutai. I hope you are doing well and uh, I hope your practice is also going well. Um, sorry, uh, I am making this video after a long gap. A um, lot of things had come in between. So I am now resuming my uh, my my videos on teachings of the Buddha. Uh, okay, so what I am reading right now is this book, uh, In This Very Life, In This Very Life by uh, Saida Pandita. This is a book. This is freely available. Uh, so what I generally do is that I take a... Uh, this book is freely available online. You can just search for it in this very life. Uh, it's on the Vipassana practice. And uh, I just uh, you know, take a back-to-back -back printout of that book and get a spiral binding done. Right? So thank you so much for to the author for, uh, for, for putting out this work uh, in public. Uh, so in this book that I'm reading, I'm just sharing some of my learning from uh, uh, one learning is that uh, 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 Saidao has given the example of uh, in, the, in a section where uh, he's talking about uh, four powers which motivate successful practice. This is page 78. Uh, Saidao says about uh, the importance of uh, the Buddha. Uh, Saidao talks about that Buddha gave the example of a hen, uh, a mother hen. We should practice like a mother hen. So what the Buddha Buddha says, I'm just uh, reproducing that particular uh, 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 section of that page because it inspired me a lot. So uh, Saido says, the Buddha gave a rather homely example which illustrates how the results of meditation are attained. If mother hen lays an egg with sincere wish for it to hatch, but then runs off and leaves the egg exposed to nature's elements, the egg will soon rot. If on the other hand, the mother hen is cons conscientious in her duties towards the egg, Sitting on it for long periods every day, the warmth of her body will keep the egg from rotting and also permit the chick within to grow. Sitting on the egg is mother hen's most important duty. She must do this duty in the proper way, with her wings slightly spread out to protect the nest from the rain. She must also take care not to sit heavily and crack her egg. So she has to be very mindful in, in terms of um, sitting on I, she has to sit not lightly because otherwise the the chicken will not get the uh, warmth she has to also ensure not to be very heavy in her sitting uh, otherwise the shell will break if she sits in proper style and for sufficient time the egg will naturally receive the warmth it needs to hatch inside the shell the embryo develops beak and claws day by day the shell grows thinner during mother hen's brief excursions from the net the chick inside may see light that slowly brightens. After three weeks or so, a healthy yellow chick packs its way, way out of the claustrophobic space. This results, result happens regardless of whether the hen foresaw the outcome. All she did was sit on the egg with sufficient regularity. Mother hens are very dedicated and committed to their task. At times, they would be rather hang, hungry or thirsty and they get up from the egg. If they have to do to get up, they go about their errands as efficiently as possible and then return to their sitting practice. So basically, uh, for the uh, Sado says, so too for the yogi. If during sitting meditation, you are prone to giving in to all the whims to scratch, shift, squirm, then the heat of the energy will not be continuous to keep the mind fresh and free from attacks by the rotting influence of mental obscurations and difficulties. A yogi who tries to be mindful in each moment generates a persistent stream of energy like the persistent heat of mother hen's body. This heat aspect of energy prevents the mind from rotting from its exposure to klesa attacks, klesas, the, the, the negative qualities of the mind. All the five of the mental fetters, the mental fetters of the kleshas, right? the obstructions of the mind, negative qualities of the mind, they arise in the absence of attention. Right? Close attention to the whole process of eating, close attention to the whole process of walking, everything allows the, uh, the, the, the wrong, the klesas to not appear. And slowly and slowly, the mind gets filled with the gratitude for the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha. One begins to see the appearance and disappearing of things and realizes their impermanent nature, their suffering and lack of permanent self, the three things, right? So basically what, okay, I will not read further. Basically what the, I understand from this is, what Buddha said is that let us be, be like a mother hen. 
how a mother hen takes care so when she has given birth to a chicken the chick she doesn't leave it like that right she sits on it hatches it similarly we in our practice as students of buddha's teachings we have to practice mindfulness every moment to the extent possible see we cannot be mindful all the time except maybe when we are in a retreat we can be more mindful for more longer durations but during the day as what we can be mindful like okay i am doing my work and as soon as i became free from my work i start becoming mindful of my walking my sitting my eating and everything what this does is that it con- generates the energy of mindfulness this is what the master thiknat han also says generate the energy of mindfulness so much and and when that ge- mindfulness energy gets generated what happens is the klesas the energy of the klesas is subdued right so so the, the whole scheme how this works and as per my little understanding of buddha's teachings is that we have to continue 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 to be mindful our mind gets more and more more and more concentrated and focused and then insight dawns on us insight about what about appearing and disappearing nature of things impermanent nature nature of things existence of suffering and lack of permanent self the three characteristics of this samsara that there is suffering right there is suffering there is impermanence everything is changing and there is no permanent self all these three things we will get insight only when we are mindful and our energy of mindfulness is sufficiently developed it cannot be like i can i am mindful on day 1 and then i am not mindful for 7 8 days and day 9 again i am mindful no it has to be if you are a very sincere student of buddha then you have to be develop your mindfulness so one is the regular sitting practice maybe half an hour morning half an hour evening and if you can do more that is very good but even not during day time also be more and more more so what my experience has been is that as i have become more and more mindful i try to be and i fail most of the times is that i am become i begin to see the deeper kind of teachings what buddha says and the more i realize the deeper teachings of buddha i realize how how fortunate i am how fortunate i am that i am in buddha's teachings i'll make separate video on my personal reflections of buddha's teachings but i realize how deep these teachings are and if i have to free myself from the suffering of this samsara i need to be free of craving and to be free of craving i need to be mindful and get the insight that everything is impermanent there is no no question of craving that will arise when i have that insight so uh, so this is the flow and the important thing coming back to it i will not make make this video long is to remember to be like that mother chicken mother hen right uh, and devote more and more time to our sitting practice and more and more time to our day to day uh, um, uh, mindfulness a uh, practice in our activities do uh, share your thoughts do share your your feedback uh, and uh, do read this book i'll make further videos from my le- learnings from this book and i also will make uh, uh, the videos on my learnings from the sutras as i as i resume i hope the video was useful namo buddhaye namo buddhaye